Ever heard the phrase, Aku Cinta Indonesia? I love Indonesia. Sometimes it feels a bit overused, right? Like a slogan at events to make you feel patriotic. But for some people, those words are more than just lip service. They translate into incredible acts of love and dedication to this amazing country. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that warms the heart. Stories of people who fall in love with Indonesia. But hold on, this isn't your average tourist love affair. We're talking about foreigners who go beyond admiration and take action. We're not just talking about Indonesians either. There are incredible foreigners out there who have been captivated by Indonesia's beauty, its friendly people, and its rich culture. Their love for Indonesia goes beyond admiration. It compels them to take action and make a real difference. Today, we're diving into the stories of three foreigners who are going above and beyond to serve Indonesia wholeheartedly. Get ready to be inspired. From entrepreneur to children's champion, Kaim Fetter. Remember those viral stories about a foreigner who sold his company to help Indonesian kids? That's Kaim Fetter, a Dutch entrepreneur who landed in Indonesia in 2005 and never left. Now he's running a foundation dedicated to the well-being of children in Lombok and Sumbawa, West Nusa Tenggara. Although born in the Netherlands, Kayim's parents and grandparents had once lived in Indonesia during the Old Order era. Since his teens, Kayim secretly worked and managed to save money, eventually establishing his own company at the age of 23. His love for Indonesia began to emerge during a vacation to Lombok in 2004 and a return visit a year later. From that trip, Kaim encountered street children in Mataram, NTB, who were begging. This incident made him realize that there were children growing up in difficult conditions with little opportunity for a better life. Seeing young children struggling on the streets while enduring hunger when they actually want to go to school touched my heart to save them. It turns out this is what made me know what I live for he said. To him, the street children admitted to being abandoned by parents who became migrant workers. There were also children who were abandoned because the grandmother who cared for them had passed away. On the last day of his vacation, Chaim took a street child to school and asked permission from the teacher to finance his education for a year. The teacher was then asked to become the child's guardian because he had to return to the Netherlands. Chaim then sold his company and intended to move to Indonesia. Initially, he wanted to open a resort on Gili Trawangan, North Lombok, NTB. However, those plans changed when he saw many children on the streets of Lombok. With the money from the sale of his company, Kaim and his childhood friend established the Paduli Anak Foundation in 2006 in Lombok. They initially bought 1.5 hectares of land in the middle of rice fields to build shelters, schools, and health facilities. Hundreds of children live in the foundation. The foundation's funding comes from Kaim Fetter's personal funds and donations from non-governmental organizations, NGOs. A midwife with a mission, Robin Lim. Next up, we have Robin Lim, an American midwife who's become a hero for Indonesian mothers. For over 20 years, Robin has dedicated her life to helping underprivileged women give birth safely. The next story comes from Robin Lim, a hero for mothers giving birth. Serving in Indonesia as a midwife for over 20 years, she chose to help those in need. She may not be a native Indonesian, but her dedication to the homeland is beyond doubt. Yes, Robin Lim is an American citizen midwife who cares deeply for poor women giving birth in Indonesia. Having a health clinic called Yaya San Bumi Sehat in Bali since 2006, Robin Lim offers free childbirth and postpartum care for those who cannot afford it. Thanks to her dedication and service, Robin Lim has received various humanitarian awards, one of which is the 2011 CNN Hero Award. 
Robin's desire to pursue midwifery was influenced by personal experience when her younger sister died, along with the fetus she was carrying, because the doctor failed to provide proper health care. The bitter experience led Mother Robin, as she is affectionately called, to decide to become a midwife to help save more mothers and babies. Mother Robin moved from Hawaii to Ubud with her family 26 years ago. At that time, she found that many pregnancies in Bali were high risk due to malnutrition coming from poor families or having no access to skilled midwives. Slowly, Mother Robin, with the help of some colleagues, assisted mothers in childbirth from house to house before founding the Bumi Sehat Foundation in 2005. Today, the foundation has a branch in Aceh, established after the 2004 tsunami, and another clinic in Sentani, Papua, which is currently under construction. The dedication and love that form the basis of Mother Robin's activism for nearly three decades of living in Indonesia have not gone unnoticed by the media. In 2011, she was awarded Hero of the Year by the CNN News Network and won $300,000. Defending the Forests, Aurelian Brule. Our last story takes us deep into the Sumatran and Kalimantan forests, where Frenchman Aurelien Brule is fighting for the survival of primates. Aurelien Brule is a Frenchman known as an environmental activist. He is also the founder of the Kalawait Foundation, which is actively involved in the rehabilitation of wildlife victims of deforestation and poaching. Chennai, as he is commonly called, has dedicated himself to preserving Indonesia's forests for more than two decades. His love for wildlife, especially gibbons, has captured the attention of netizens. Chennai first set foot in the country in 1998. Twenty years later, he became an Indonesian citizen. He chose to become an Indonesian citizen because Indonesia is the home of the primates he loves. Now Cheney nee chooses to live in the forest with his wife and two children. The picture above is Cheney's house, almost all of which is made of wood. The house looks so lush. Born in 1979, this man also uses environmentally friendly energy to meet the electricity needs of his home. The location of his house, far from the city center, requires Cheney to use a satellite dish to get a signal. These are just three of the countless stories showcasing the incredible power of love for Indonesia. It's a love that translates into real action, a desire to make a positive impact. Whether you're Indonesian or a foreigner who calls Indonesia home, let's all be inspired by these stories. Let's show our love for this beautiful country by protecting its natural wonders, cherishing its culture, and contributing to its progress. Together, we can make Indonesia a place full of love, hospitality, and opportunities for all. Don't forget to leave a comment below and tell us, what are some ways you show your love for Indonesia? And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more stories of amazing people and incredible places in Indonesia.